Hello and welcome to video 5. So today we're going to be talking about how I'm planning on doing the motor mechanism for the spool to pull through the filament and we're talking about how we're going to do the filament extruder and modify that so that we can get 1.75 millimeters filament through this. So here's a picture of the results at the end of this video. Um, as you can see below the electronics here, you can see the STM32 device. So that was talked about in the previous video. So up until now we have all the electronics working and we kind of just have to finish up the extruder and then the spool. Alright, so let's get right into it and start talking about the nozzle and how we're going to modify that to work for what we need. So here you see is the nozzle that I bought from AliExpress for pretty cheap. It's just a MKA extruder. I searched in like ANA A8, which is the 3D printer I have. And then this is just the standard extruder, don't need something fancy. We just need that aluminum block there and then a nozzle and then the heater core. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is drilling out this aluminum block to about 8 millimeters ish not quite sure yet but just something big enough where I can get a plastic strip through it we're gonna be taking off this tube here and then we're gonna be drilling out the nozzle to 1.75 millimeters so then we, when we pull out plastic it'll be the correct filament size that we want and then we're also gonna take a piece of metal and then mount it to our platform that we're gonna be mounting everything else on so here's a picture after I drilled it out. As you can see, the nozzle hole is a lot bigger than what they usually are. Usually it's like 0.4 millimeters, but now it's 1.75. So that's the size of the filament that we're gonna be extruding out. And then I drilled about an eight millimeter hole into the block and then it's just tapered down so that the plastic can nicely flow through the aluminum block into the nozzle and curl it on itself while it does it. So here's a picture of basically what it looks like when it's all done. So after we drill the holes out, I just cut up a piece of metal. This piece of metal was specifically from an old desktop computer box. And then I just kind of curled it around, drilled two holes, and then mounted a screw through the bottom platform. And then the other one I took the nozzle off and then screwed the nozzle down so that the metal is squished between the nozzle and the aluminum block. I also had to drill a small hole for the thermistor on the other side because I decided I wanted the block to be flipped and there was only a hole on one side so I just drilled one on the other side but that's not a big deal. So this is the nozzle setup that we're going to be using for this project. And next I'm going to talk a little bit about the motor that I chose to use for the filament spool. So this is the motor I decided to use. I'm deciding to use this one because, well, I had three extra and I wasn't doing anything with them. And it's kind of a nice setup because they have a lower voltage DC motor connected to a big gearbox. So it already does some of the gearing down for me, but I'm going to have to gear it down a lot more because I tried hooking it up to 3 volts DC and it's still pretty fast. So I'm going to be using this setup and it comes with a couple of mounting holes and the output shaft is not circular so it would be pretty easy to mount gear to that. Now I want to talk about some designs that I'm thinking for doing the spool holder and how I'm going to figure out how to design that. All of the animations I'm going to be showing now are made on Fusion 360. So this is the first design that I tried to do. As you can see here the DC motor is still rotating pretty quickly and that means that the spool will be rotating pretty quickly which isn't what we want. We want really low speed and higher torque so that it can pull the filament through the nozzle and then spool it up in this mechanism. So I have to redesign this to a second version, which I'll show in a second. 
So here's an animation of the second version. As you can see, I have a gear attached to the DC motor, and then I have two additional gears, which the last one is attached to the spool. You can see that it's still rotating pretty quickly, which we want it to rotate very slowly, and have higher torque so it can pull that filament through. So in the next version, version 3, I'm going to be actually adding more gears so that it'll reduce the speed and increase the torque. So here's the third and final design. As you can see here, I've showed a side view with the mounting that I'm planning on doing, and then a, another side view with just the gears. So using this configuration allows us to get a slower speed with higher torque, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to 3D print these gears and then use an old spool from 3D printer filament and this mounting I'm just going to cut out of plywood and then I'll show you the results here. So here's the DC motor that I'm using and I'm just showing the connections between two gears right now so you can see the speed. And then here's the setup of version 2, so as you can see this spool is kind of rotating pretty quickly, so this is why I decided not to go with that version. Now you can see the plywood cutout, and this is kind of like version 2.5, so I have 3 gears here. And then this is how everything looks like when it's standing up with the three gears and the motor on. And then this is version 4. I changed out of the DC motor just because I had longer wires which worked better for me. But as you can see I have four additional gears and the spool is finally rotating at a slower speed with much higher torque. You might also notice that little string which is going to be used to pull the filament out of the extruder and into the spool. And there we have it. All of the pieces of the puzzle are ready to put together. And this is what everything looks like after we make everything in this video. I have a power supply there that was just from an old computer. But I don't think I'm going to use that. I think I'm going to use something else. So we have all the parts here upon mounting on the board. This is how they look, and the next video is going to be the testing, and we're going to be seeing if we can actually make some filament out of some bottles. I have a large collection of tennis ball bottles, which are PET, so we can try doing that as well. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped anybody that's trying to make this project, and we'll see the results in the next video, and have a good day.